Hello, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you can uh, you can all see me. Uh, I'm taking it you can. Uh, if you uh, if you could just uh, let me know if you can see me okay and hear me, uh, that would be fantastic. So uh, you should be able to comment or uh, add something maybe in the Q and A, uh, something like that. So uh, it's great to be here, and uh, thank you for your time. So. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm live. I hope I am. Uh, can somebody just make, let, let me know that I am live? Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> I was slightly unsure I was talking to myself then. But anyway, I'm not for once. So uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for attending. I really appreciate your time in being here. Uh, we've got, uh, I, I think, about 40, 44 people scheduled to be here. But typically with lots of webinars, not just mine, but only a percentage turn up. So we've got about uh, about half of half of the people are here already. Uh, it's spot on 11. So we're going to make a start um, just before we do. Let me just tell you a little bit about what I've got planned for you today. Now, one of the things with webinars is, you know, you, you attend a webinar and you think, oh, this is just going to be a sales pitch. Well, I want to assure you it's definitely not that. I am really going to try my best to have lots of value to give you some great ideas and ways in which you can grow your business. That's ultimately what I'm, I'm trying to do here. From my point of view, I just want to demonstrate my expertise so that you think, do you know what? I really need to uh, maybe work with Steve and uh, let him help me to grow my business. Now, obviously, the, this is not going to be a hard sell, um, but I will uh, offer you at the end of the webinar uh, a, a deal. And uh, I'll also offer you the opportunity to have a, a free one to one with me, a Zoom meeting where we can just talk really about your your business and your marketing get to get uh, allow me to get to know you better and then uh, you know if you think do you know what yeah i'd like to work with you steve that's great and if not that's really cool uh, and i don't have a problem with that so uh you know let's just um uh you know get cracking and i'm going to do a share screen and uh and off we go if you've got any questions by all means put them in the q a uh, I'll probably do a Q&A at the end. So uh, let me just see if there's any anybody's having any problems. Uh, yeah, no, everybody's saying they're all OK. So that's good. Uh, and uh, and off we go. So uh, just do screen share. Uh, hopefully this will work. I'm actually using a new system today. So rather than doing this on uh, uh, the old system that we used on Zoom, we're using um, a, uh, a a new system uh, which is Zoom webinar. So it's the first time we've used it. So it's a little bit of an experiment. So there you go. That's a picture of my ugly mug. And the uh, topic of today is results mastery. And um, one thing I'd say just to kick off it with is is that when you're looking at your sales and and market inside of your business really it is all about results you know uh let's leave the the brand recognition the you know getting your name out there to the you know companies like coca-cola and nike and people like that with big budgets uh when we're doing marketing in small businesses we should really i believe be focusing on results how many leads does this is create uh, what is our conversion rate from lead to sale or lead to meeting a meeting to sale and so on and so forth because these are the results that really matter in your business so if you think about what a business is and what you're doing it, there's only really uh one objective for a business and that is to make a profit even if your business is a a charity you know you want to make enough profit so you can take that profit and do good in your whatever it is your your charity does if it's a business you want to take that profit and you know invest it maybe back into the business or into cars or houses or whatever it is for you uh, that you would uh, like to do so if the objective of a business is to make a profit and you're here because you want to make more profit then a you're in the right place and b 
Um, you know, there's only two ways of doing that. One is to reduce costs, which is a good thing to do. You know, I wonder whether you could save 5%, 10% right now in your business. You probably could, and that's fantastic. Go and do that. You probably do that instantly. You do that today. You know, look at what you're spending and can you cut down at all? And then secondly, which is the real leverage, because you can only save so much, you know, and even if you turn over 10 million, uh, there's only, you know, you've got to spend something, you know, and you can't cut that back down to nothing. You know, you, you, you're you going to have costs. Um, so the real leverage is increasing sales. And as I've said, that's ultimately what results mastery is all about. Now, uh, as I've said, thank you for your time. What we're going to cover and how we're going to do it, I'm going to structure it, to be honest, around my results mastery program. Now, that's not that I'm going to be, you know, pitching you on that. What that's about is I'm going to be covering the seven elements of it and giving you some great tips, great ideas to grow your business based around that. I hope that's okay, but I want you to, to be very clear. This is not about you know, me pitching you uh, right throughout the, the, the day. We're just going to go through a little bit about what you can get by joining the um, Results Mastery Program, and then I'm going to be giving you a massive amount of content, uh, content. So this is really important. Why is it important right now? Well, you know, you look at the economy and where it is right now. You know, we've just come out of covid and everything when i say out hopefully we have um uh, you never know but there's a lot of uncertainty around i think right now and uh, if you're going to be you know successful in business what i i really believe we can't afford to do is just to wait around for politicians and the world and the economy and whatever else just to see what happens before we do anything you know, we've got to take action. We've got to move our businesses forward. And, uh, you know, I, I can't say that strongly enough. Now is the time. You know, it's also a great time because some people are doing just that. You know, your competitors are hanging back, doing nothing, going, oh, well, oh, you know, I'm not sure. I don't know whether to move my business forward. A little bit unsure what's going to happen, you know. And so they finish up doing nothing, get no results, or at best get the same results that they've always got and uh, don't really get anywhere. But I, I, you know, I would say around that, that, you know, if you always do what you've always done, then you always get what you've always got is no longer true. That ain't true. You know, if you always do what you've always done, then you're not even going to get what you've always got. You know, the world's changed. We all know that. And so we've got to change with it. Now, why me? Why why are you here with, with, with me and what can I do? Well, many of you know, uh, I've been around for a long time. You know, I've been around for 26 years and I've spent most of that 26 years, in fact, pretty much all of it, learning my trade, learning my stuff from the world's leading sales and marketing experts. I'm going to be quoting from several of them uh, today. Uh, somebody said to me a little while ago, have you ever actually had an original marketing idea yourself, Steve? I said, no, it's all come from other people, uh, from learning from the best in the world. And I did that in my table, Teddy Stay. Excuse me, I just uh, need a, a quick drink. <clears throat> I did that in my table tennis days, and uh, I spent time around some of the best players in the UK, learned from them, and raised my game, which is really what, you know, playing international sport is all about. And it's the same in business. It's the same in sales. It's the same in marketing. You know, if you don't take anything from today, the number one thing I hope you take is that you're going to raise your game. You're going to raise your sales and marketing game to be better than you were before. Does that make sense? I'm again hallucinating that it does. Uh, so that's where all this stuff comes from. That's where all the ideas are. Uh, let me just do a very quick uh, overview of results mastery for you. So the program itself is a 12 month program. There's 250 plus video training sessions that you'd gain access to if you decide to join. 
that can be divided into seven modules, which I'll talk about in a minute. You also get group meetings with me, 9 to 10.30 every Wednesday. Talk about your business, ask you questions, benefit from the other people in the group. Uh, a really, really valuable part of the program. Uh, you get a kickoff meeting with me, plus quarterly one-to-ones. They're about a half a day, something like that. It's not a quick, you know, 45-minute session. This is in-depth to help you set up your online marketing uh, program. We're also running a two-day conference. You gain access to all my training. You've got an open line to me, and it's all back with a 100% money get back guarantee that you'll get at least, and I mean at least, 10 times what you pay for the program back or is free. We'll, we'll give you your money back. And, and to be honest, that's such a ludicrously low figure that um, you know it, it's just a no-brainer as long as you don't FDI, which stands for fail to implement. You know, you've got to implement. That's the key to success and that's the key to the program. So this is the, the online training side of it. I just wanted to show you that. I think it looks blooming brilliant. It really does. And you can see in, in here, there's the training center. There's a report card. It shows you what training you've done, all your notes. Uh, in here, there's a, a file vault with loads of um, you know documents, checklists, reports, and so on and so forth. So really, really useful online training. They're the modules, seven of them. You see, the first one is actually an introduction. So we're going to be looking today at strategy, finance, customers, systems, people, marketing, and uh, sales. Now, I think if you could get better by, I don't know, 10%, 20%, 30%, or even more in each of those key modules, or key areas of business, I think that would make a fantastic difference to your business. I always like when I'm working with people to say, you know, I wanna help you to double the size of your business. Now, if we've got anybody on that's turning over a hundred million, you know, that might not be, you know, a reality, but if you're turning over a few hundred thousand or perhaps even a, a million pounds, you know, or, or you're a, you know, startup on 30, 40 grand a, uh, a, a year, then, you know, we can really help you on, on this program. Uh, once, once you click, once you click into these, you can see where it says select at the bottom. That brings you to a, a load of training. So I've clicked in uh, marketing mastery. I think there are something like uh, 25 videos at the moment, and that's constantly increasing. You can see some of them there. And, uh, you know, that's that's the program. So that's that's the sort of main pitch of it over with. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about what that costs and uh, what sort of deal we could do at the end. So into strategic mastery. So the first thing I want to talk to you about, and it is probably one of the biggest mistakes that I come across in business, and that is you cannot manage what you do not measure. You know, if you can't tell me your sales and marketing numbers, then how do you know whether it's working or not? Or if you change it, how do you know whether it's improved or it's got worse? And the truth of the matter is you don't. You cannot manage what you do not measure. So, again, one of the things I hope you take away from this, if you're not already doing it, uh, is you start measuring your sales and marketing. And if you are doing it, you perhaps look at how you could do it better. So you can tell me, you know, when we meet, you can tell me how many leads you've got this month or this week or this quarter, how many of those turned into meetings, uh, what your meeting conversion rate is, what is your average unit of sale, um, and so on and so forth. Now, digging down from that, you could tell me how many LinkedIn contacts you've got, how many phone calls you've made, how many people have come to your website, how much business have you won from referral, how many referrals have you asked for, what is your open rate of your emails, and so on and so forth. Now, you may be thinking, bloody well, next, Steve, that's a lot of work, and, and it is, but it, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how important would you say that is? I'd say it's about a 12. Now, you might want to think about you know, not doing quite as 
you know, in depth as that. You might think, right, what are the what are the five key performance indicators that I'm going to start measuring on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you know, and 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 start with that. So that might be uh, the key. So the second thing I want to talk to you about under strategy is what I call the key to geometric growth. Now, I learned this from a guy called Jay Abraham. Some of you may have heard of Jay. He's a, an American marketing guru, you know, calls himself the world's leading marketing expert. He, he charges allegedly $50,000 an hour. Now, I'm a little bit less than that. So, you know, if you want to come with me instead of Jay, then, you know, I'll do a, a little bit better deal than that. I only joke. Um, yeah, the key to geometric growth. So what is that about? It's, it's about a real principle that when you do marketing, the effort you put in has no correlation to the results that you get. Let me explain. You could send an email out and you send that out to, I don't know, 3,000 people and you get an open rate of 20%. And out of those, let's say 200 people visit your website and out of those, you get 20 inquiries. So they're the numbers. Geometric growth is about going, right, what do we need to do in order to improve those numbers? So you think, right, let's start by looking at uh, the numbers of emails we send out. We need to grow that database. Instead of 3,000, our objective in the next six months is to grow that to 5,000. We want to get 2,000 more people into our email system. So that's one thing we can do. Then we could look at the email and see, is there anything that we could change to uh, improve the open rate? So, well, yeah, we could change the headline. There's an old saying that in, in advertising that the headline is the advert for the advert. So by changing the headline and improving that, we could get more people to open it up. So instead of getting the 20%, we get 25 or 30%, 30% being a 50% improvement in the open rate. Now, we got 200 people to go to the website and uh, you know that's okay, but how could we get more people? Well, hopefully, just by getting a, a bigger database, we could improve that by 50%. But if we could improve on the email, the call to action, uh, or maybe offer something for free in order to get people to go to the website to download a free report or to watch a video or to uh, uh, maybe attend a webinar, who knows? Uh, but but to do something, you need, uh, I believe in, in email marketing, you need to tell them what to do. And the same applies, by the way, on social media. If you're doing social media and you just write in a post, that's one thing. But if you're connected to me, for example, on LinkedIn, you'll see most of my posts lead back to my website. So I might say, I've uh, just written an article about how you can get more people to your website. If you want to read it, click here and that sends them to my website. So I get over a thousand people to my website every month from LinkedIn alone. And that is brilliant. I make over a hundred thousand pounds from LinkedIn alone. Now I'm not saying that to impress you. I'm saying it to impress upon you because if you're not and you knew how to, then that's going to make a, a big difference to your business. So, you know, you need to know and understand how to do that. Um, so if you looked at each and every element of your marketing and said, right, how can we create geometric growth in this, whatever this may be? Uh, for example, one of the best forms of marketing, in my opinion, on the planet is still, even in this digital age, referral. You know, referral marketing is fantastic. And yet when I speak to most businesses, and I say, uh, you know, where do you win most business? They say, well, you know, it, it's mainly referrals, Steve. And I say, well, oh, fantastic. So tell me, um, how much business do you get from referral? 
And uh, they said, well, we get X. And I said, right, what's your referral marketing plan? And they go, well, we haven't really got one. And they go, well, why not? And said, well, we, you know, we do a good job and hope people uh, will recommend us. And I said, well, that's great, but it's not as good as it could be. So we need to look at what we can do to increase and improve that. Does that make sense? I'm hallucinating you're all nodding your head now. So I hope you are. So the next one is what I call the three missing keys to marketing. Now, I took, took this from Michael Gerber, right? Gerber is brilliant. The author of the E-Myth. Sorry, I need another drink. I've got very dry. <clears throat> there we go. So Michael Gerber, if you've not read the E-Myth by Michael Gerber, go and buy that book. You know, again, if you don't do anything other than buy that book and read it, which is a novel idea, because apparently 90% of business books that people buy and never get read. So buy and read the E-Myth. Um, and uh, it is a brilliant book. I actually think there should be a law in this country that says you're not allowed to start a business until and unless you've read the E-Myth, uh, because you know 80% of businesses go bust within the first five years, and that's a terrible statistic, I think. So the three missing keys to marketing are, as Gerber says, innovation, quantification, and orchestration. Let me explain. Innovation, it is changing the little things in your marketing in order to improve the results that you're getting. Let me give you an example. So if you took a web page, let's take the home page of your website. So what could we improve on your home page? We could improve the headline. We could improve the subheads. We could improve the text. We could improve the layout. We could improve the use of pictures. We could improve the video that's on there, or we could add a video if there isn't one. We could uh, add a special offer to your page to get people to uh, not only visit your page, but to give you their contact details in exchange for something that is of value to them. We could improve the call to action. We could add testimonials or improve those testimonials. Do you get the idea? And that's really, I suppose that links very much to geometric growth, doesn't it? But it's about improving what you've already got. So if you're getting a thousand people to your website every month and not getting any inquiries, then, you know, that's not great, is it? We want to get some inquiries. And what do most people do when they do that? They go, oh, we clearly need a new website. And they get a new website design that still didn't win them any business. So, you know, there are two things with websites. One is traffic. you got to get people there. And number two is conversion. And they, I believe, are the only things that matters. Do you get people to your site? Do they convert into leads and or sales? Um, they're, they're the two questions I always ask people. Um, the, the second one then, so uh, innovation, quantification comes back to step one. Uh, is your marketing quantified? Is your sales quantified? Do you have an understanding of those numbers? And then orchestration is making sure that everybody in your team does things to the same high standard. So, for example, if you've got a way of uh, greeting new people when they arrive at your office, we need to make sure that's the standard that everybody um, uh, basically uh, buys into. If you've got a script that you use for attending networking events or perhaps for asking for referrals, we need to make sure that everybody in your team uh, knows that script so that when they're out, I don't know, down the pub and somebody says, what do you do? So somebody will be able to say, well, I'm a secretary at the ABC company. And somebody says, oh, what do they do? And they then they just launch into that script so they know exactly what to say. They don't wing it, which basically so many businesses do. So that, I think, is really important. Uh, number four in, in this is your expertise. Now, uh, what I'm talking about here is 
you know, you're all experts in what you do. You know, we've got people with, in loads of different industries with some great skills on this webinar. I know that from looking at your backgrounds. And, uh, you know, really, if you think about it, we're all experts. You know, we're, we, we might have somebody who's a, an expert because they're a lawyer, uh, an accountant, a HR person, an IT person, a, a fitness coach, whatever it is you are an expert in, that is great and really important because if you're not, the market will find you out. But, you know, if I asked you on a scale of one to 10, with one being really low, like terrible, five being average, you're an average knowledge, and 10 being truly world class, where would you rate your ability, knowledge, and skills in terms of sales and then in terms of marketing? Because if they're low or if they're average, guess what you're gonna get? Either poor or average results. Now, I'm thinking that you're on a, a, a webinar about results and improving results. Um, you want to do better than that. So that, that's my hope for you. So you need to, my message is, you need to work on your sales and marketing skills if you're going to become better at creating and converting leads. Uh, again, I really hope that makes sense. I'm sure it does. The last one, the five C's, I've got another slide for you. So here we go. So the five slips, five sleeves, the five C's even uh, are a methodology. Again, I learned this from somebody else. This is not mine. Uh, this was learned uh, from a guy called Daniel Priestley. He's an Australian guy. I think he lives in London. And I went on one of his seminars and he spoke about the five C's. So I thought I'd bring it to you because it's a great concept. By the way, um, I was just looking for his book, but I can't, it's, it's over there, so I'm not going to get it. But he's written a, a fantastic book called um, the, the, the Five Keys to Influence, okay? Uh, how to, no, no, sorry, it's not. It's how to become a key person of influence. How to become a key person of influence. If you're in, a, you know, like a consultant advisor in the helping industry, brilliant book, go and buy it again on Amazon. I'm not on commission. Uh, it's just a great book. So um, uh, I'd recommend that. So let, let's go through the process. Right now, you know, one of the things you need to focus on, I believe, is what I call crowd development. You need to get known by more people. You know, if you've got, you know, 300, 300 people that you're connected to on LinkedIn, and yet your market is solicitors in the UK, and you know that there are 10,000 of those, can you see the problem with that? You know, it's just not going to, you know, you, you're only marketing to a little, you know, whatever that is, like 2% of your market on LinkedIn. You may say, well, that's that's nothing, Steve. I've got a, I've got an email list. I said, well, how many is in that? Well, I've got 2,000 in that. So that's 20% of your market. You with me? So we, we need to basically start the process of turning strangers into people that we know and who know us. Uh, I, I uh, call it, uh, you know, get, getting people to know, like, and trust me. That's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to get you guys to know, like, and trust me better so that, you know, come the day when you want some more help, you, you know, you might consider me. That that's ultimately what I'm why I'm running this web, webinar. So getting people to know, like, and trust me. Now, once we've got that, they sort of know me. We've got to get them to do something, i.e., going for coffee. Yeah. Now it might be a little bit early to go. You know, I don't go up to people on LinkedIn and go. You know, will you connect on LinkedIn? And they go yes. And I go right. Do you want to buy my results mastery? They go no. I don't even know you. Who are you? You know, it's too early in the process. And yet most people uh, I, I see do that. And it's just too early in the process. I, I, I call it, you know, the William Arony approach. You know, it's like going up to strangers going, hi, uh, my name's Steve. Do you want to buy my services? No. Oh, all right. And I'll go and ask somebody else. Do you want to buy my services? No. Oh, all right. I'll go. You know, we wouldn't do that, for example, at a networking event. And yet we do it on LinkedIn, we do it in email marketing, 
all the time. So you need to think about what is your version of going for coffee. So mine is coming up, getting them to come along to a webinar, getting them to read a report, getting them to uh, download a free report that I offer on my website, getting them to connect to me on LinkedIn. That's probably the first step. That's more turning strangers into people that know me, actually. But you get the idea. So what is your version? How can you nurture them? Once we've done that, we've got to get that first date, that first sale. You know, it's no use being able to, you know, send them all a load of free stuff forever. We've got to convert them. So we, we need to be better at turning people who have communicated with us into leads. And for me, that becomes better at meeting them. You know, there's nothing better. The more people you meet, the more people you talk to, whether that's on the phone, whether that's on Zoom, or whether that's in person, whether that's a networking event, or a, a webinar, or a, uh, a an exhibition, the better. You need to have more conversations in your business. If I asked you, you know, how many phone calls did you make in January? Now, I don't know what that number would be, but if you could double that, do you think you could double the amount of business you got? Mm, maybe, certainly something to think about, isn't it? So once you've done that, we've got to think about maybe uh, upselling them, selling them something else, or perhaps cross-selling them, selling them a different product to the one that they've already bought. You know, I, I for example, have my, my LinkedIn training is a real easy sell. It, it's online. It's £49. It's a no-brainer. Why do I charge so little when it is so valuable? It's like a, a, a first sale. So people buy my LinkedIn training on a very regular basis. I sell lots of it. And then I speak to them, have a conversation. How's it going? Would you like a meeting? We can talk about LinkedIn. And I tell you about some of the other things that we do. And, and so in a way, it's just a lead generation magnet. But once somebody's giving you some money, they are more likely to give you some more money. Does that make sense? Assuming you're good at what you do. So that's about developing that relationship. Then, and really importantly, continuity. We've got to get them to come back and buy from us again and again and again. So that could be something like setting up a, I don't know, a monthly program like the Results Mastery Program, or uh, you know, maybe maybe selling them something, uh, you know, and just being out there pushing them towards certain products that you feel would be of value to them. But we need a process to keep that income coming in, uh, I believe. And um, I was I was talking uh, many years ago uh, to, uh, uh, I was up in Carlisle and this guy put his hand up and he said, that doesn't apply to me. I said, why, what do you do? He said, I'm a funeral director. He said, the thought of people buying again and again and again is a bit scary. I said, oh, no, but the guy in the box is not the customer. It's the people around his family that may need other funerals in the future, let's say. But uh, I hope that model is is useful for you. I believe it's fantastic. Uh, you know, it is it, the, the, the answer to you getting that pot of gold. It really is. So uh, take a look at that and, uh, you know, work out what are you going to do under those uh, five key areas. So the next one, uh, under financial mastery, and what I've done here, I want, I want to get, give you a clue as to why I'm, I'm covering these things, is that I, I want to demonstrate some of the stuff that you'll get on financial mastery. Now, this uh, one, Profit First, uh, it's based on a book. Now, that book is something that I read. It's by a guy called, I'm going to hate myself here. I've got to try to pronounce his name. So Mike Michalowski, possibly. Mike, Mike, let's just call him Mike, shall we, for ease. So uh, he wrote this book, and, and it's brilliant. I've got to tell you, it, it, it's, I think, one of the most powerful things that I ever picked up in business. Because typically in business, profit comes from whatever's left at the end end of the month, end of the quarter, end of the year. So lo lots of accountants will say, right, well, last year you made this. 
Now, if you've got a, a goal in mind, i.e. you'd like to make 25% uh, profit or 50% profit, whatever that may be, uh, the idea behind, behind profit first is that when somebody pays you something, so if, if somebody pays me a thousand pounds for something, I take 25%, which is what we try to make profit, 25% profit. I take 25% profit and I put that in my profit account. I got a separate account for profit. And I've also got a separate account, I'm talking bank account here. I've got a separate account for tax. So I then take another 20% and put that in my tax account. So I've got three business accounts. Now, in order to make 20%, uh, sorry, 25%, I need to be able to run my business based on 55%. Uh, I need to run my business, pay my tax and make a profit on 55%. So I can tell at the end of the first month whether I'm on target or not. Because if I haven't got enough money in that 55% of my income to pay all my bills, then I'm not on target to make 25% profit at the end of the year. So I need to do something. Does that make sense? It is so simple, so easy, so incredibly powerful. When I first picked this up, which is about three years ago, I, I was not making the profit that I am now. Let's just leave it at that. This has helped me to make so much more profit in my business. And it would you, you too. And again, that's just one of the things under financial mastery. Next one, customer mastery. Uh, another great book. Ken Blanchard, the author of The One Minute Manager, wrote this book. Again, go and buy this. Uh, it's a great book. Um, and I want to tell you a quick story, if I may, uh, based on it. Just checking my watch there, make sure I'm not overrunning. So quick story. I turn up at a firm of accountants. They're called K&H. They're in Thiel, just outside Reading. I walk in the door and I walk up some stairs. And at the top of the stairs, there's... A, a a big poster like in, in a frame and it says welcome steve mills and i thought wow that's cool i've never i've never i've never been in an office that have done that I've, I've never experienced that ever i walk into reception lady called bernadette she goes oh hi you must be steve mills welcome and thanks for coming here today i said oh oh thank you you know, the person in reception knew my name. Oh, that's never happened before. She then said, I believe you've got a meeting with Bob Harper. I said, yeah, that's correct. Yeah. She said, right. Which which coffee would you? Sorry. She said, would you like a coffee or tea? I said, a coffee, please. And she said, which coffee would you like? She said, here's our menu. She got a bloody menu of it. Like, and this is like a few years ago, before the days of Starbucks, about eight or 10 different coffees that I could choose. I thought, wow, that's, that's never happened to me before. I go into the, the, she then shows me into the boardroom, beautiful room laid out immaculately. She said, if you'd like to have a seat there. And in front of me is another little piece of paper. And that piece of paper says, thank you very much for uh, uh, coming here today. You'll see that uh, we've provided you with a pen, a notepad, and a copy of the E-Myth, which is a book by Michael Gerber that we give to all uh, the people who come for a meeting with us. It, it's fantastic. Best wishes, the team at k and now, at this point, I'm thinking, bloody heck, this is fantastic. And, and this is the message around Ken Blanchard's Raving Fans book. He says, satisfied customers are not what we're trying to achieve. A satisfied customer is somebody who goes to, for a restaurant, they have a nice meal, it's okay, the food's fine, the service is okay, it's a reasonable building, you know, it, it, you know, everything's clean and so on and so forth. Now that person might come back uh, again, they might buy from you in the future, but there's no real 
connection there. They don't think it's like, oh, you know, oh my God, this is just the best place ever. We've got to tell all our friends, let's come back again next week and so on and so forth. And that's what Ken says raving fans do. Raving fans, satisfied customers are reasonably happy. Raving fans are exactly what it says on the book cover. They are raving fans. They talk about you. They recommend you. They only buy from you. I'm a raving fan of Apple, right? I, I would only ever buy an a, 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 a Apple computer. I'd only ever buy an Apple phone. I would never buy anything else. And if Apple came up with TVs or cars or whatever, I'd want an Apple car. So I'm an absolute raving fan of that company. And uh, that's what we want to try to create. So under customer mastery, that's what I want you to think about. So I want to think, you know, the reason I'm showing you this and telling you this, I want you to think of your version of that, your version of the K&H story. And that doesn't just begin with prospects. It continues with customers. What is your new client system? What actually happens when a client comes on board? Uh, what happens on step one, step two, step three, and so on and so forth? How many steps are there in that system? Do you notice that very neatly leads me on to systems? Systems mastery, yeah? Uh, how do we produce and what systems should we have in our business? Because systems, I believe, are the key to success. It's like having a process. We need a LinkedIn marketing system. This is the way we do it here. We need a new client system. We need a bookkeeping system. We need a system for marketing our website. We need a system for winning business from referral. We need a system for managing our paid advertising on Google. We don't want to leave it to the goodwill of people who work for us. Uh, let me give you an example. So I'm doing Google advertising. I've got a great guy who works for me. He manages it all for me. Uh, he knows more about it than I do, and he's really switched on. But one day he goes, thank you ever so much, Steve, but I'm going to go and work for somebody else. Or, you know, worse still, he's ill or injured or, you know, he's no longer working for me. What happens? Well, I'll go and find somebody else who may be better than him, may be the same, may be worse, maybe has different ideas than he or she does. Um, but the point being that I don't have his system. So I want to get him to write it down exactly what he does. So we've got that system in place in our business. Again, does that make sense? I really hope you're thinking it does. So three most important words in marketing. This is part of that system, I believe. They are testing, testing, and testing. Why is testing so important? Because we can improve results massively by testing different things. Let's face it, all marketing works all the time, but it doesn't. It doesn't work all the time. All marketing works, uh, but sometimes the system, the process is not right. You know, have you ever done any marketing that's not not working. I can definitely put my hand up to that one. I've done loads of marketing that hasn't worked. Um, I've probably done more marketing than everybody here that's not worked. And so I found out what works by testing different things. I remember one example um, that um, you may have seen on my website, but I'll use it anyway. I was working for a company who sold a big, um, expensive £2 million product that helped local authorities with waste disposal, you know, um, uh, recycling and all that. It was like a big conveyor belt type machine and all the cans went off here and the bottles there and the paper somewhere else. And it was all automated. Now, they'd been advertising on a, um, a back of a magazine, nice glossy mag, two grand a month. They spent 12 grand, been there for six months. I came along and I looked at the ad and they said, look, you know, we don't know what to do. It's not working. Shall we? pack it in. I said, well, let's have a look. We looked at the ad and the advert was the name of the company. And I said, why are you using that? Are you really well known? They said, no, no, no. It's about brand awareness. I said, well, let, let's not worry about brand awareness. Let's worry about getting some sales in. So they changed the headline 
I've been asked them a few questions to local authorities save 20 to 30 percent on recycling costs uh, uh, through our fantastic new product. Now that apparently was worth um, ran about three or four million to the average size uh, um, local authority. We ran that ad. Uh, the first month we got five leads, two of them converted. We made four million quid. I made four million quid. It took me about 15 minutes to work it out. That's how powerful testing is. But if you don't test, guess what? You get the same results. You know, you've got to try different things in order to improve them. And uh, once you start to measure, uh, uh, change different things, quantify what's working, then uh, test one element at a time. So you're not going to like change the headline, change the copy, change the offer, change the pricing. Change it wouldn't do that because like which is which one of those has made a difference? We don't know. So test one element at a time. Again, I'm assuming that makes sense to you. Um, I love this quote. What happens if we train people and they leave? It's a John Harvey Jones quote. He says, what happens if we don't and they stay? So all I'm talking about in this particular part of the, the program, people mastery, is training. You know, what, what training are you doing? Uh, what training are your team doing? And I'm talking specifically stuff that's going to help you to grow your business, i.e. sales and marketing. I'll tell you what I do. I train every single day. Every day, I never, ever don't train. When do I train? You think, well, there's not a lot of time. You're really busy, Steve. Uh, I've done a half an hour's training this morning uh, in the car listening to a uh, listening to Audible. Uh, I was listening to Dan Kennedy, uh, known as the grandfather of marketing, talking about marketing. On the way back, I'm going to listen to Grant Cardone on sales. So that's an hour's training today. I then take my dog a walk. What do I do? I listen to a podcast. I then go down the gym after that. I've got another 45 minute training session, not only physical training, but training this thing here uh, to improve my marketing. So by the time I've done, I've done two hours. I'm sure you could do a quarter of an hour. You know, you could get your people in to do quarter of an hour's sales training or marketing training every day. Again, it's about raise your standards raise your standards and become better. That's really what this whole thing is about. That's what about improving your results is about. Okay, marketing. Why does most marketing not work? Um, there are many reasons. Uh, it's typically, it's things like your headlines are not good. That's always where I start. Your uh, The words on the page, whatever that is, an email or, or on a video or whatever, they're not good. Uh, it could be pictures. You need to change or improve them. Uh, it could be the call to action. It could be the price. It could be testimonials. I see so many pages that I go to on websites with zero testimonials. You know, this is just missing out. You know, I see people on LinkedIn. And I look at their profile. And I say, well, how long have you been in business? Oh, 15 years. All right. Okay. Let's have a look at your LinkedIn profile. And they've got two recommendations on LinkedIn. You know, give me a break. What have you been doing for 15 years? You know, I've, I've got, I think, just short of 150 testimonials on LinkedIn. Again, I'm not, not trying to impress you. I'm trying to impress upon you. You know, you need at least 10, you know, and you could get 10 by the end of this week if you put, if you ask. You know, ask and you shall receive. And if you don't ask, you don't get. You know, people are not, what, what have I got 150 by asking? Nobody's, I don't think anybody has actually given me a testimony, testimonial without me asking. I don't think so. So, you know, that's why marketing doesn't work. It either doesn't get done, which is a big one, uh, or, you know, people have not tested different things. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Not tested different things in order to improve performance. Does that make sense? So next one, persuasion stacking. You might be thinking, what's that? Let me give you an example. I mentioned to you a few minutes ago about my online LinkedIn training. Now, that is normally, it's £299. However, at the moment, it's 
14, I think it's 49, yeah, it's 49 pounds. And if you buy it, it's, you know, it's a, it's a really good product. However, if I was using this advanced persuasion stacking, I'd be saying it was 299 pounds, it's now 49 pounds. Not only that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in a free 30 minute LinkedIn review with me, one-to-one. -one. Now, in addition to that, I've also developed a YouTube training program. The YouTube training is 299 pounds. So you're gonna get uh, the 200, uh, 299 pound LinkedIn training, 299 pound um, YouTube training, plus uh, a, a time with me, which I'd normally charge 150 pounds. So you're gonna get approximately 750 pounds worth of, of value for 49 quid. How's that sound? And that's what advanced persuasion tracking is. It's about getting that first easy sale, making it an absolute no-brainer. What I've just said to you there is a no-brainer. Why wouldn't anybody do that? You know, uh, I, I was talking the other day to a guy called um, uh, Ted McGrath. Now, Ted's a like real leading guy, and he's seller, he, he sells marketing programs uh, basically for next to nothing. But he was saying that he, he out of the people that buy it, uh, he gets um, about 25% of them to buy into his £2,000 program. And he's getting like 60, 70,000 sales a month. So you work that out. Uh, absolute fantastic opportunity there using stacking. Um, lead generation from your website. Um, what am I talking about here? I'm talking about getting more leads on your website and um, not, not necessarily sales. If, if you sell things, fine. But what I want you to think about is what could you give on your website in order to get people's information? That's what you want. You want you know, 5% of the people who visit your website, you want to get their contact details, their name, telephone number, email address, so that you can market to those people. So if you're getting a 1,000 people to your website, but you have no clue who they are, what's the value in that? So uh, there's another great tip for you. Uh, remarketing. If you've not heard of remarketing, you don't know what it is, let me just explain. Remarketing is the process of... Uh, advertising to people who've already been to your website. So you come along to my website, you disappear off, you decide not to buy anything and you don't give me your contact details. I'm then advertising on the Google network of 2.5 million websites uh, seeing my advert. Uh, companies like Amazon have been doing this for years, haven't they? This is open to us, small businesses. We can do this. It costs virtually nothing. I spend £30 a month on this. This is like just a no-brainer thing that you should be doing. So all of a sudden, all these people, a 1,000 people uh, per roughly about every couple of weeks, let's say, let's say just, just below 3,000 people come to my website every month. And they all start seeing my adverts everywhere. And I get such great feedback. They go, they tell me things like, oh, Steve, you must be so successful. Uh, like, I haven't seen you everywhere. The other day, I went on to the Times newspaper. You're advertising on there. He said, and, and then I went up to my, my local golf club up in Yorkshire. And you're advertising on their website as well. Ah, you must be really successful. And, and the truth is, I'm not. I'm using remarketing to advertise to my people, the people who've been to my website. It's so powerful. And, you know, I strongly recommend you uh, implement that. The next one, I've already told you what I think is the most powerful marketing on the planet. So think, what is your referral marketing plan? You know, what, what do you do? What do you say to people? If you say something like, I was wondering whether you knew anybody else who'd be interested in my... Uh, uh, and my services, you know, think about saying something better than that. So uh, our little script that we use is, um, I was wondering out of all the people that you know, 
who'd be the top three or four people that you think we could help in the same way that we've helped you? Do you think you'd get more from that second uh, script than you did from the first? If you do, you'd be absolutely right. Um, and then you can think about other systems that you could use, incentivizing people. We have a system that we use whereby if somebody recommends us, we donate £100 to cancer research in their name. How cool is that? I love the fact that we've donated £6,500 to cancer research. I just wish it was 600,000 because I mean, I would be, uh, you know, a multimillionaire now. But, uh, you know, there we are. That's what's working uh, in our business. Um, last one there is funnels. You know, uh, I'm sort of running out of time a little bit, but I'll try not to go over too much. Uh, why do you need funnels? Uh, go and have a look at something like click funnels um, by a guy called Russell Brunson. Check out click funnels. Um, and what this enables you to do is to set up, it's almost like one page websites covering loads of different things. The reason you're here on this webinar is you went to my webinar funnel. If you've downloaded a report that I've written, you've gone to my pre-report funnel and so on and so forth. Okay. So it's a great way, simple and easy of setting up uh, high conversion funnels uh, that really work really, really well, and you need to do it. I can't, I could literally run a, a day's seminar on funnel development, uh, but I'd recommend go and check out Click Funnels to see if that's of interest to you. Okay, sales mastery. We're nearing the end now. Develop a proven sales system. You know, what is your sales system? People go, well, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I do this, he does that, and that's about it. We need at least a 12-step sales system. It is a proven fact that most people don't buy until they've had at least eight contacts with you. So we need at least 12 things that you're going to do when an inquiry comes in. What are yours? So you need to think about that. CRO, what does CRO stand for? It stands for Conversion Rate Optimization. So uh, how can we optimize our conversion? How can we make sure that when we have a meeting with someone, we get the most conversions out of it? Again, there are loads of things we can talk about here. We don't have time to do so, but I just want to get you thinking about something. If you've got a 40% conversion rate, so in other words, if you get um, 100 leads coming into your business over a period of time, and you're getting 40 of those turning into a sale. If you improved by 20%, from 40% to 60%, so 20% improvement, what would the ongoing result be of in your business? It wouldn't be a 20% improvement. It would be a 50% growth in your business without generating any more leads, without doing a lot of the stuff we've been talking about. And you should be doing all that as well, by the way. But if you just worked on improving your conversion rate, 50% growth in your business by improving conversions from 40% to 60%. Again, fantastic uh, idea, I believe. Well, one I picked up, I think, from Frank Kern. Uh, secret to doubling sales in 30 days. Well, what that is really simple, guys, make more calls, make more calls, get on the phone, pick the phone up. This thing here, it's got, you know, what I'm holding here is a, a smartphone. If you're not making calls on it, it is a dumb phone, right? It's costing you money. This is um, a very good friend of mine, Mike Wilkinson, has a sign above his phone and it reads, pick me up, I'll make you money, <laughs> you know, and it couldn't be said any better, you know, so um, that's really, really important, you know, if you just doubled the number of calls you made, you'd potentially double or at least significantly increase the amount of business, you know, when did you last call all the people you're connected to on LinkedIn, you know, or the people that you've been sending emails out to? You know, the answer for most people is to go, well, I've not really done that. OK, so now start doing it. OK, it'll make a difference um, and go and do that. 
So last part, part here is just get better. Just get better. You know, you can make more calls, yeah, or you could become better at making those calls. Having a really good script, uh, improving that script, and then improving it again and improving it again. That's what's going to get your results. That's what raising gain, your gain is all about. That's what improving, that's what results mastery is all about, about getting better and better. So if you're interested in this, I'm just about on time, which is really good. Uh, and very unusual for me, by the way. Um, so results mastery, I've told you what's in it. You get all this stuff. It's, it's, it's a brilliant program. I've taken my 26 years to learn it, and I'm going to pass it on to you. You got you got the access to the group training. Uh, you got the online training. You got quarterly meetings. You got. I, I'm not going to go through it all, but you know, there's there's loads of reasons why you should do that. And I think the number one is the guarantee. You know, you're going to get ten times investment, ten x, ten x investment there. That's what you're going to get at least. And to be honest, you know, it's a no-brainer. So my goal for you is not not just 10x what you know what it costs you but really a 25 to 100 percent growth in your business but i will guarantee you'll make at least 10 times the cost of the program or you get your money back providing you don't fti fail to implement you know if you join the program and don't ever turn up to any of the meetings and don't ever do anything I'm not giving you your money back. Why should I? I'll give you your money back, absolutely, if what I tell you and what I teach you and what you implement doesn't work. I, I'm very confident in it. I know it's going to work as long as you take action. So what, it's going to, what is it going to cost? And eventually, I'm going to put the price up to 10 grand, but um, it's only just kicked off, kicked off literally at the beginning of January. Uh, we've got, um, I think, about five members so far. We're not after hundreds. That's not what we're about. We're trying to get to like 10, 15, maybe 20 members. So I'm doing a good deal at the moment. I think it's two, it, sorry, it's three grand up front, £3,000 if you pay up front, which is a saving of 598 or you can pay 299 a month. Again, it's a no brainer in terms of how much increased income you will generate as a result of being on this program. Uh, so you invest three grand uh, or 299 per month. You get back a guaranteed 30 grand. If you don't get it back, um, I'll give you your money back. Uh, however, you can expect to get 25 to 100% growth in your business. Now, if you want to have a conversation with me about it, see if it'll fit, see if you think it'll work for you, very happy to do that. If you go to that website there, steve-mills.com forward slash results hyphen mastery, or just go and find it on my website, um, you can do one of two things. You can either sign up, stick your credit card in, and, and you'll be registered, or you can uh, uh, request a meeting with me to discuss it and see if you think it's right for you. So that's it. That's my presentation. Let me just um, go and have a look to see if we've got any any questions at all. Uh, let me just uh, stop the sharing and go and ask any questions. So anybody got any questions for me? Uh, I'm holding here just to see if anybody's got any questions. If you haven't, that's fine. But if you have, if you have just, you know, as I say, book a meeting with me. Very happy to talk to you um, and answer anything uh, that, yeah, any questions that you've got. Um, these are all questions, I think, from the beginning saying you can hear, I uh, can hear fine. Nobody's adding anything. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to leave now. Thank you ever so much. Thank you for sticking with me as well, by the way. You know, uh, I appreciate it's a long time. Uh, an hour, but we've uh, we're only just over, so not too bad. Uh, and uh, go and book that meeting. I'd love to have a conversation with you. As I say, we got, we're going to do a half an hour meeting, and I'm going to talk to you about your business for like 28 minutes, right? Uh, asking you about your marketing, what's working and what's not, what you're doing, how what your conversions are, what your numbers are, and then at the end of it, I'll say, look, you know, if you do want to go ahead. Here's how to do it. And uh, that's it. Thanks ever so much for listening. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Take care. Bye.